Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been an eventful week so far. First of all, it was my mom's 80th birthday and so there was a big celebration back uh, south of here where my family lives and so we drove down there and celebrated with my mom and actually the whole family and that was wonderful. Okay. Is Oma's birthday party? Yeah. Yep. You want to come show us? Let's go. Let's go do a tour. You show me, okay? Come on, everybody. It's so pretty. What's your favorite part? The ice cream? Yeah. This is my mom, and it's her 80th birthday. How many grandchildren do you have now? 92. <laughs> Surrounded by all her 92. children and her grandchildren that love her. Yeah. Yeah. And then Caroline was able to come home for the weekend and so she came up here with some of the cousins and she had just got all four of her wisdom teeth pulled so she came up here to recuperate and so she wasn't too active, just kind of relaxing, doing some fishing and uh, was nursing her swollen face. But she's in good shape now, everything's back to normal and she recovered from that nicely. We had an amazing time together, enjoying the island and enjoying Caroline's company. Then we jumped in our Jeep again and we drove uh, four and a half hours down to Toronto International Airport to drop off Pete Jr.
right, it's been about a four and a half hour drive. We're just approaching the airport now. We're dropping Pete off. He's heading on an epic adventure to southern part of Africa, South Africa, Namibia, Botswana, and uh, he's gonna have an amazing time. He's filming with the XO crew. Two months, he's gonna be gone. We're gonna miss him, but uh, we're excited for him because we know he's gonna have an amazing time. Wonderful experience for him. He's going to learn a lot. And Ma, don't worry, <laughs> don't worry. You raised him right. He knows what he's doing. No, I, I'm I'm more crying because I'm really excited, and I'll just miss him, um, miss Caroline. But we have Dan and Lando with us, so that's it's just it's just neat to see your kids growing up and just uh, blooming and figuring out what they want to be when they. Well, they're all grown up, so... Finding um, their way in the world, you know? Definitely. Proud of you, Pete. Have fun, man. Really proud of you. Love you. And now we have uh, about four and a half hour drive, maybe five, back to the cabin. So, hopefully we get there before too dark and it isn't raining. So last week we did a walk around video of Worsley and no sooner had we completed that walk around talking about you know what an amazing vehicle it was than we were picking up Vandy from its repair after our trip to northern Quebec. It was a minor repair with Vandy and we went to pick it up and we started to hear a ticking sound in the engine of Worsley and so I thought I mean I was a little concerned but I turned around and started driving away and then the engine misfired and we got a flashing engine light. So I thought, while I'm here at the at this shop, um, or close by the shop, I might as well go get it checked out. Sure enough, I turned around, and it's been in there ever since with some serious engine problems. Um, they replaced all the lifters on one side, which is a common replacement for a Jeep engine after 100 and something thousand. At least it seems like it happens uh, fairly common if it's used a lot like the way we use ours. We've never had to do it on Vandy. Vandy's got 300,000 kilometers on, on her engine plus a hundred thousand of towing miles and uh, knock on wood we've never had a problem with the engine but um, Worsley unfortunately is in there we don't know what's wrong yet they're still tearing it apart to diagnose the problem but we'll let you know how that goes hopefully nothing too major and we can get Worsley back on the road and uh, carry on our journey well uh, I just talked to the uh, mechanic and it's not good news they're they don't want to do any more work on the engine because at this point it's um, they still haven't been able to find what's causing so much debris in the in the oil and it would cost the same amount to get a new engine as to keep digging into it so basically they're recommending a, a new engine which is a huge expense that we didn't anticipate so we have to decide what to do um, we could either spend another 700 bucks roughly to put the engine back together and then drive it and see how long it lasts. It's going to blow eventually, or we look into a new engine. <clears throat> but I mean, they're, they're quoting like 20 grand or something, so that's a lot of money. So maybe we trade it in for another vehicle. So Carol and I have a lot of things to think about and discussions to have. Let us know what you think we should do in the in the comments. In the meantime though, we're here at the island, so now that we've dropped off Pete, Caroline's back uh, doing her thing, and Daniel is filming his own channel. We're really excited. We've been encouraging him to do it actually for probably over a year, and he finally took the leap 
Um, he had done some episodes probably three years ago, and then um, we went back on the road and he stopped doing it. But I'm just uh, super excited that he's filming uh, some content for you. And if you haven't followed yet, and thank you to all of you who jumped over to his channel and subscribed. But if you haven't yet, make sure you go check out Dan's channel. Give him a subscribe. Help encourage him. Uh, it's a lot of work to create content, but he enjoys doing it and he's very talented at it. So I'm glad he can use his channel to express his creativity and to create some awesome content for you guys. So in the meantime, we're here at the island. It's another day in paradise. We had some smoke in the air the last couple days, but this morning we woke up to fresh, clean air, not, not a drop of smoke in the air. And it's just a beautiful day. So we thought we'd use the time to build a stairs here. Carol, Carol's been talking about this since the winter. If you recall in the winter, we parked the snowmobiles down here a lot and um, and then in the snow, Pete Jr. dug a set of stairs out of snow and ice and we used them all winter. And Carol thought to herself, these are so convenient in the winter, we should probably build something similar in the summer. And so I've been tasked with that job. And uh, we're, we've just been collecting some flat rocks from around the lake and some sand from the different areas that have sand washed up from the big storms. And so I'm gonna to try to recall my uh, early days landscaping and see if I can build a nice solid stairs for uh, bringing groceries up from the boat. Grizzle look like Lando's head. Little pup. 
these, bro. Wow, they're adorable. <laughs> So we said, why not two? Okay. The mix with the other three. <laughs> the handle would just take over. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's how um, the other little guys got. Where is this in there? Oh, yeah. There they perfect. are. Perfect. <laughs> Finally, we get to meet you. Look at you. That was fun. Lando loves other dogs. So, but back to our little project of making some uh, steps, or at least Pete's doing it, and I'm supervising. Hey guys, just wanted to wish you a very happy Canada Day for everyone, our friends and family in Canada, and happy 4th of July long weekend for all of our friends and family in the United States of America. Um, we have done extensive travel in both countries and we love both countries. Um, Carol's from America, she's uh, from Oregon, and I'm from Ontario here, so we are blessed to enjoy both countries yeah god bless america and canada exactly um, <laughs> amazing countries where we still uh, get to celebrate and enjoy freedom and um we got to make sure we never lose that that's important um so uh just we just wanted to take a minute and bring everyone up this up to date so much going on yeah. <laughs> in the world of the epic family road trip and uh First off, my, my throat. We had smoke from wildfires, I guess, a, a week or so ago. Thankfully, it's all cleared up, but that was abnormal smoke. It smelled like, I said to Carol, like it, it smells like plastic burning, maybe a factory is burning somewhere. It did not smell like, you know, a couple of years ago, we had uh, wildfires it, uh, two hours from here, and we would smell it, but it smelled like a campfire, Yeah. like pine. It smelled good. Yeah, this one didn't smell good at all. This was oh, horrible, and it was so bad, it... I lost my voice almost, you know, almost completely. It was just breaking up. So on this whole video, my voice is just struggling to, to stay there. I don't know what was burning, but it was bad stuff. Terrible. But I'm very thankful that the last four days or so, we've had nice fresh air here. So the other thing we wanted to talk about was um, all the change going on in our lives. And some of it's extremely exciting and just a natural good progression of a family. You know, when we started out seven years ago, we always said we, we probably have five, six years with the kids before they grow up and move on to their own lives and so on. And um, so we're thankful we had seven years with them. And uh, it's not over, as you know, but they're, the exciting thing is the kids have grown up, they're adults, and they're doing some pretty cool stuff. So Caroline's doing her year of service. Right now she's in New York with um, some cousins and friends doing... Uh, different things with our church. Uh, Pete is in Africa and uh, that is already an amazing experience for him. Dan's shooting his uh, videos every day so um, just really cool stuff for us as parents to see the kids who, who grew up in such a alternative lifestyle you know being self-educated and, and homeschooled, world schooled we called it and then taking a lot of that hands-on learning and translating it into a career. Caroline's ultimate goal with her year of service is to get onto what they call the media team, where she will be using her skills as a, as a content creator and videographer, cinematographer to create content. Um, so that's cool. That, that's coming. She's going to Europe in a couple of weeks. So um, that may be the beginning of that. I'm not sure all the details, but some of you have asked, you know, what was what's her focus, and and that was kind of she wants to serve using the talents she has. And Pete and Dan have the same talents. So Pete is uh, one of the photo one of the videographers on the crew with X Overland, and he's super good. And we really miss his talent around here. We're doing our best 
Um, so if lighting's off or audio or something, uh, we rely pretty heavily on Pete for that kind of stuff. But we're learning and we're determined to learn. We're not so old that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. You know, we're we're learning the new technologies and doing our best with it and having a lot of fun with that too. So um, those are new things when you're used to seeing us in every video as a family of five and we say welcome to another episode and all that stuff. Um, we're just transitioning to a new phase of the Epic Family Road Trip. It doesn't mean we're not going to be all together traveling at times. For sure that's going to happen. Um, well, that's this, in the plans. Well, yeah, probably this over this winter we have some ideas and plans. And... Yeah, hopefully we can do some extended, long um, international travel. But even then, we're taking it to the next level where Carol and I will be filming our experiences as, as um, empty nesters, really. Dan will always be shooting for Dan, and Pete's going to be resurrecting the Adventure Guys channel. And Caroline won't be here yet, but who knows when her year of service is over, what, what she may be in her own vehicle, trial, who knows. There's, um, there's always exciting adventures ahead. And so you've, as you watched on this video, uh, totally unexpectedly, Worsley, which is our new Jeep, is out for the count. And there it sits with the engine torn apart, and we have to make a big decision. Do we want to spend $20,000? or eight? We can probably get it for less... But how much do we want to spend and then end up in the same vehicle we, we just were driving? Or is this maybe the time to start thinking about our next vehicle? Because um, you know, we have been. We like, have I mean, been this, talking. This, this isn't a new thing. No. We're, we're constantly thinking of, you know, what, what else is out there. And when you're kind of doing like long trips or and, and you have to still work and you're trying to sit in a tent or, you know, in the elements... Um, it's a little, it's, it's a little bit more challenging. It's cool. And we did it for yeah. many years, but and, yeah, I wouldn't change we're anything, kind of, but we're kind yeah. of past that stage now, right? right. We've, we've, we were just watching our, one of our older videos with, when we went out with uh, Chad or good buddy Chad from living the van life. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. There's one on our channel and on his, um, and he came out in a sprinter van my jaw was dropped the whole entire trail. Like, yeah. he was keeping up with the Jeeps. He was in front of the Jeeps most of the time. I mean, time. he's rock crawling it, with it that thing. It was unbelievable. So we were surprised that there was nothing we did with the Jeeps that he couldn't do with the van. Um, we're not saying we're going to buy a van, but we've been <laughs> looking at all those different options. We do have the motorhome. We have a Winnebago motorhome, which is awesome. It's in really good shape, but it's just not our style. We can't get way off grid with that thing. We can't get way off the road with that thing. It's made for pavement. We've yeah. taken it, roughed it, but it, it's, it's you, you'll it. do damage to it. So yeah. so we're thinking, you know, there's a natural progression from that to maybe one of these four-wheel drive vans. We're, we're thinking about Toyota because the kids are just so sold on the uh, the trucks that XO drives with like an alu cab on the back. That's a really cool option, but the van option, and it, and I, I hesitate to say van because it's there's a big difference between van life and adventure van life. We have two friends that we've gone out with, the, the Holcomb family, and they're in a four-wheel drive rig, and they, yeah. they're they literally Jeep lifers. They just go everywhere we've ever been and more. We roll up to the, the north arm of the Grand Canyon, the north end of the Grand Canyon with them, and everything is in its proper place. There's no dust on anything. They open a, a cabinet, and all their batteries and cameras and laptops and everything is just sealed in there safely. You know, and we've always struggled with that just because of space. So these are the thoughts we're having. And uh, we thought we'd share it with you because we haven't made a decision on anything. We don't even know if we're in a position to get a new vehicle. But we think we probably could um, now that Worsley's kind of taken out of the picture, at least temporarily. It might be the right time to. And the, and the RV, as you guys know, has been going in and just getting everything buttoned up. I mean, we were hemming and hawing about it because it always came useful. But then we're like, it just won't take us to where we want to go. It's paid off. We have no no payments it's on like it. It's like heartbreaking. It, it's an amazing in that thing. Sense, it, but... it, we raised our kids in there back in the day. We have so many experiences and, and memories. But that being said, we've just fallen in love with the Overland versus the RV lifestyle. And uh, even though you can boondock with those things, and um, it's just we love getting way off off grid. So that's the I don't know, I wouldn't say dilemma, but that's what we're up against. And so if you have any thoughts, um, as usual, put them in the comments. We always love to hear from you guys. What was and, that Toyota that we were just looking at? The 
house no truck uh, truck house truck, truck house, house. if you guys see that that that's incredible Three hundred seventy-five thousand yeah. dollars, but it's incredible. Yeah, <laughs> truck house on a Toyota. They they now are working with AEV and they have it on a Dodge. But there's so many options. But of course, it's all about there. You have to weigh, you know, budget and then all kinds of things. So, yeah, many many options. But we appreciate you guys, uh, and we always appreciate your input and your feedback. And thank you for sticking with us through all this change. It's uh, typically hard. A YouTube channel gets known for one thing. The family and the jeeps and the trails and the mountains and and when we did we after being so many years on the road we came to the cabin into the island and so many of you stuck with us and we thank you for that and now we're into another phase of change we're always going to have this place to come back to but we want to do more travel but probably not just you know in, in definitely not in a tent anymore and so we're we're gonna stick with us as we figure this one out <laughs> and take you guys with us